Hi, I'm Blake Marcus. Uh, I work here at the Minnick Law Firm, and seated next to me is Mr. John Williams, who will introduce himself. Yes, I am John Williams with Angel Light Counseling. I do DWI assessments, substance abuse assessments for other things, and uh, other counseling as, as well at our agency. So this video is meant to give people uh, to open the black box, if you will, about assessments. Uh, we get a lot of questions about assessments, and Mr. Williams is very experienced in the field, so he has taken time out today to help explain some questions and answers about the alcohol assessment process. So, Mr. Williams, if you'd like to take it away. All right. Um, I have had a bit of experience, uh, about 28 years of doing this kind of work in North Carolina uh, at different agencies. Uh, we've been at Angel Light for about eight years now. Uh, that's my own agency and uh, we have offices in Mars Hill, in Burnsville, and in Asheville. So, DWI assessments uh, consist of four components. The first is that we look at the driving record. Second, we look at the BAC result, that is the blood alcohol content. The most important component, of course, is the uh, assessment itself, and that is an interview that lasts usually about an hour. Uh, we ask about uh, family history, we ask uh, about medical history, we ask about job history, and of course the uh, first time people drank or used any drugs and what kind of medication they're on, that sort of thing. Um, and the fourth component um, is a, a questionnaire. We use something called the SASI, which is about a hundred questions, true, false, uh, circle of the right number. The state requires that we use this, um, the score of that may play some part in decision making, uh, but the, uh, the assessment itself, the interview, is the most important part. Um, the assessment for DWI costs $100 and that is state mandated. We can't charge more or less. Everybody uh, has to pay the same thing across the state. Uh, if we do assessments for other than DWI, that is uh, possession of marijuana or um, other drug uh, or alcohol related offenses that are not for DWI specific, we still charge $100, but we may add a $20 fee for a urine screen. Uh, some agencies don't do urine screens themselves, they'll send you to an agency that does urine screens um, or a laboratory, uh, which is usually considerably more money than the $20. But, um, that's usually the entire uh, amount for the assessment. Okay. So. And so, during the assessment, uh, after the assessment, Mr. Williams, um, what kind of treatment options are usually recommended? What, what are the uh, treatment options? Well, uh, they start with education, uh, a 16-hour education course, which is called ADEDS, that's Alcohol Drug Education Traffic School. Um, that has to go over a period of five days, so it's about three hours or a little longer for each session. Um, the next level is uh, 20 hours statewide, um, and that is a, a minimum for short-term treatment. The next level is 40 hours, that's a minimum for the, what they call the longer-term treatment or uh, uh, intermediate. Then we go to intensive outpatient or IOP. Uh, IOP is 90 hours over a period of 90 days. And uh, a lot of agencies that do DWI assessments do not include that in their own services. In fact, I don't in ours. It's uh, usually a larger agencies, state funded, uh, that will do that kind of program. And of course, the highest level is uh, inpatient rehab, which can go anywhere from seven to 60 days or in, uh, inpatient treatment is usually around that. Uh, residential can come after that for anything up to a year. We usually don't recommend that much. It's either inpatient treatment followed by uh, some outpatient follow-up. So there are five levels, the education, short-term, longer-term, IOP, and, uh, and then rehab. Okay, thank you. Um, and another question um, I have for you, Mr. Williams, is is it important for a person to get the assessment done in North Carolina if they're charged with a North Carolina offense? It's quicker and uh, cleaner, I think, if they live within striking distance. If somebody is from uh, California and they're just visiting here, they can certainly do all the services out in California. If they're in South Carolina or Virginia and they, can, they have to come down here for their court case anyway, oftentimes we'll do the assessment, tell them what kind of treatment program they have to go through, and they can complete the treatment program in another state. And in your opinion, Mr. Williams, how soon should someone get an assessment? 
Well, the, the need for an assessment is going to uh, is going to come on if they're convicted. Um, the judge is going to order that. But if they want to take an assessment before they go to court, it counts as a mitigating factor. As you well know, there are mitigating and aggravating and grossly sure. aggravating factors. And so the more mitigating factors one has going to court, the better uh, they're going to be. Um, sometimes they want to, if they get a DWI, uh, they get a 30-day revocation. Okay. After 10 days have passed, if they have an assessment and have some other paperwork in order, they can get a limited privilege to drive for the rest of that 30-day period. They have to have the assessment in order to get that. So if people really need their driver's license right away, as soon as they can get it, it would be 10 days, then it's advisable they get one right away. Okay. So the privilege is pretty important then. So the assessment is pretty important for the privilege and the Absolutely process. necessary, yes. Okay. And does the, does the assessment expire after a certain amount of time? It does. Uh, it's good for six months. If someone has not uh, entered the program that's recommended within a six-month period, it expires and they would have to pay for a new assessment. Okay. And that's just, that's the law. Gotcha. And if someone, can someone get an assessment at one agency and then do the treatment at another agency? Absolutely. In fact, in our agency, we give them a list of other agencies in, in the county. Uh, that they can go to. Uh, we always like for people to come back to our own agency, of course, um, but we are fair about it and give them a list of phone numbers and so forth of the other agencies that they can go to. They can take an assessment from one agency, go to another, and they don't have to pay for a new assessment there. Good, good. And is, is there any duty of confidentiality that you owe to someone who comes into your office? Absolutely. Uh, as a professional counselor, uh, I and all my colleagues across the state who do these DWIs, we have to give them uh, a HIPAA uh, notification form and assure them that anything that they say to us is confidential unless they sign a release. Of course, they have to sign a release for you, the attorney, sure. so that we can let you know what's, uh, what's recommended and that they've done the assessment. Also, for DMV and the courts, if they want our assessment to count. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't sign that, we can't let any information out. And we certainly can't tell family members, employers, or uh, people off the street who ask. Uh, no, nobody else okay. except those who are approved. Okay. And I think that as an adjunct to that, what the court sees from our assessment, we ask a lot of uh, personal questions and family uh, uh, background and thing like that, um, that they may feel sort of apprehensive about is this is this going to get to the court and it does not uh, only in the uh, event that a judge would order a file to be if I have a court order I have to respond to that and let him let the judge or he or her see uh, uh, anything that uh, that uh, we have written in 28 years I've been doing this I've never had a court order okay. asking for that but it requires a court order for the release of yeah. information okay. um, and another question um, how, how much do the treatment classes cost? Do they vary per agency, or how does that work? They do vary per agency, except the ADETS program, the Alcohol Drug Education Traffic School, that is $160 that's set by law. Every agency that does that is the same. Um, I think the average across the state was reported by the state at $18 per hour for treatment okay. in the short and longer term programs. And uh, IOP, it's I don't know what that is, but it usually is ranging into several thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but insurance and or uh, state funding or Medicaid uh, will often uh, come in and help with those higher oh, good. goods. Good. Yeah. Very good. How is the assessment and treatment actually submitted to the DMV? What is the process for that? Well, there's a form that's called the 508 form, which the clients don't see much of because it's electronic. Uh, we do give them copies of the hard copies of it. Um, and it's a double process. We create a 508 form when the client first comes. Uh, but that's just half of the deal. Okay. Uh, we submit that electronically. It goes to the Department of Health and Human Resources, but they don't even see it yet. It's just hanging there in cyberspace. Okay. Um, at the time that the client completes the treatment program or the education program that was recommended, the second half of the 508 is completed and that is electronically sent and joins up sort of with the other half. Then it goes to the Department of Health and Human Resources. 
they review it to make sure there are no mistakes and they send it right on to DMV. Okay. Usually when they finish treatment, um, we submit the form within one to five days, it's cleared through DMV. And if they're, if they're eligible to get their license back, they can go right on and do that. So, yeah. and, and a final question for you, John, just in your opinion, you've done it for so long, what do you feel the overall goal or, or um, mission is of the alcohol assessment and for a client? Well, I think that uh, um, the main goal is to put people into a program that will fit their needs so that this will never happen again. And we can only go by what the clients tell us sure. and the breathalyzer and the driving record, of course. But uh, sometimes uh, the fit is not right. And nine out of 10 people who get one DWI will get another one sometime in their life. The goal is to help people understand their relationship to alcohol or other drugs, uh, the dangers of drinking and driving or using drugs and driving, and the effect on their families so that they may make better decisions. In many cases, the best decision may be to quit drinking. In some cases, just drink less or be more careful. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, I think that answers all my questions. John, thank you so much for being here, taking time, and uh, really shed some light on assessments. So thank all you so right. much. Glad to help. Thank you.